What's up everybody, this is Carl from Techful Goodies, and today we're taking a look at a mini PC. This is the Geekome Air Series. It's their Mini Air 12 Lite mini PC. And I've heard a lot of good things about Geekome. I've watched a lot of videos on them, so I'm really excited to try this mini PC out. I think one of the good things about this mini PC right off the bat is that it has that 12th gen Intel Alder Lake N100 processor. That's kind of like the target processor I think you should be looking at when you're looking at a mini PC. Uh, it is just so good across the board. It has four cores and four threads, which just sort of give you that extra processing power depending on what you wanna use it for. So let's go ahead and open this up, boot it up, give it a test, give it a try, see if it's something that you're interested in and go from there. So this is the Geekome Air series. This particular one has eight gigs of DDR4, but it goes up to 16 gigs. And it also comes with a 256 SSD in it. So that's your storage as well. And it will go up to a one terabyte SSD. Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.1, and it comes with the Windows 11 Pro. Make sure you look in the bottom here for all your goodies that come with the mini PC itself. We'll take a look at what all those are. And thanks to Geekom for sending this over for me to try out and share with you. I really appreciate it. I love to be able to share stuff with you so that you can see all the information about it before you make your purchase, if you make one. All right, so you have a, a standard power cable right here that looks like it goes to a power brick. Then they try to keep their power consumption low. And again, that's where that N100 processor comes in. Uh, this particular power supply here is a... 19 volt, 3.42 amp uh, power supply for output. So if you're gonna use this in a different situations, so if you wanna use it as a desktop PC, or if you wanna use it as a media center that you kind of have on all the time, you're gonna have that lower power consumption, which I think is kind of important. So here's your power stuff, and manual and information. You also get a full HDMI to full HDMI, so you don't have to use some kind of proprietary cable that's like a mini to a full size HDMI. Uh, this is a Visa, mounting bracket. So one of the things I think is becoming increasingly popular with these mini PCs is to basically take the mini PC and plop it onto the back of a monitor. Then you have, in essence, an all-in-one PC that you can move around your house and use in different areas if you want. And then again, with a lot of these affordable portable monitors, some of them come with that Visa mounting on the back. So then you have kind of one unit uh, if you want to go out on your back deck and watch some football, or if you want to go down into your garage and watch a tutorial on YouTube, you can just bring it with you, plug it in, and you're all set to go. Anyway, this is the actual mini PC itself right here. On the front of the device, you have two USB 3.0 ports. You also have a microphone and a headphone port, as well as the power button. And if you look under here, if you're interested, it does have some pins. They give you the ability to have a hard drive activity LED, an external power switch, uh, as well as the power LED and external five volt DC. So they have a display port. You have a full size ethernet, two USB ports here, and then two super speed USB 3.0 ports and your HDMI. So this machine here with the HDMI is gonna be able to support a full 4K resolution if you wanna use this specifically for like uh, a 4K monitor or a media streaming center, uh, you can do so with uh, and get that sort of full 4K resolution straight out of the box. And when it comes to a mini PC, these are usually for your everyday sort of meetings, your light office work, home theater, sort of targeting users with a moderate performance needs as well as sort of looking to get a good budget machine because these mini PCs are so super affordable. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get this hooked up, boot it up, see how it looks, do a couple little tests, maybe some small games, play some video, test it out, see how it works. Alrighty, so now we've got it all hooked up. Let me go ahead and power this on so you can see the boot cycle and how fast it boots. I press the button there and I have it hooked up to sort of this portable monitor right here so you can see from the top down how fast it starts up. And we'll go ahead and open this up in a few minutes just so you can see exactly what's in there. Alrighty, we're already to the login screen. And we're in. And that is super blazing fast to jump into Windows and get started. Um, if I wanna do a couple tests here, let's go ahead and open up Edge. And this will just give you an idea of how snappy this computer is when using it. I'm gonna jump over to YouTube and here's my channel. And sort of scrolling through here, you can see it's really snappy, really quick. 
and I'll pull up one of my videos here. Now this is not a 4K monitor, but I will go ahead and toss the 4K stream on there. So basically it's taking it from here, down sampling it to a 1080p, but it's still having to process that 4K stream coming in. So you get a chance to see exactly how it'll work with 4K. This would be perfect for just using as an everyday driver, um, maybe an editing machine, simple image processing and stuff like that. But so far, very impressive as far as how this N100 processor and the specs of the machine are sort of helping it. So far, I'm very impressed with this mini PC. I've used different ones in the past where they're just, you know, they're kind of the base minimum that you would want. And this kind of is that sort of step above giving you that extra, like I said, N100, uh, M.2 drive, DDR4, all the things you would want in sort of a modern full-size computer built into a sort of a mini PC here. As far as gaming goes, there are specific benchmarks you can check out on their website. This doesn't have a dedicated uh, graphics GPU or anything like that. It has that sort of built-in GPU. So you'll be able to play some sort of casual games that you, if you want to. Like for example, if I do this sort of Subway Surfer here, you can get an idea of how well this is gonna play. And you've all seen me play this before and know how terribly bad I am at playing this game, but I'll do my best. Oh but I'll do my best, but it's really just to show you how well it will run if you do these casual games on this mini PC. All right, down, down. And this is not the best keyboard to try this out on, but you can see how smooth it is. I mean, it's capable of playing casual games. Oh, now I'm on a hoverboard. But as you can see, it's having no issues with that. And with that death, I will go ahead and stop saying that. So like I said, in general, across the board, you'll get some casual gaming in on this. But I think the true power with a mini PC like this is the ability to use it in different situations, like I said before. Use it as a media PC. You know, you don't have to use Windows on here. You can put Linux on here. You can put other operating systems on here. It comes with Windows built in, so I think that that's something that you can start with. And because it is a mini PC, having the ability to sort of put it on the back and make it all in one computer, even if you use a touch screen portable monitor, Monitor, put this on the back of it, you're all set. You don't even need a mouse and a keyboard. It's like having a big giant tablet that you can take anywhere. So let me go ahead and shut this down. We'll go ahead and open this up and take a look on the inside. And the reason I want to do that is because it does have some upgradability based on what you choose as far as your options. The one thing to note when you are opening these up is that these are captive screws. What that means is you can unscrew the screw and it won't come all the way out of the base itself so you don't end up losing the screws when you need to put it back together. And this is what I mean by those captive screws. See how they don't come out of the hole when you're unscrewing them, which is very nice. And this is about as far as I'm gonna go because what I want you to see is that it does have an upgradable path. Um, this is a 256 M.2 drive right here. Uh, if you want to switch it out, you just take the screw out and plop another one in, as well as one stick of DDR4 RAM which can be upgraded. You can see here, so you just basically take this out, toss a new one in, click it down. And like I mentioned, this does come with eight gigs of RAM and you can't up upgrade it. So you'd have to buy one stick of DDR4 of 16 gig and pop it in there, or this will go up to a terabyte drive. So if you have a terabyte M.2 drive, you can slide it in there and you're good to go. So, so far, I'm very impressed by this Geekko Mini PC. It does support two 4K displays using the DisplayPort and the HDMI. Has a ton of I.O. with all the USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports. Low power connection, that Visa mount, so you can put it back and make an all-in-one PC. Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.1, as well as the full-size Ethernet port, which I think is really important, especially if you want to use it as a media center hooked up to your main TV. The four core, four thread N100 processor with a 3.4 gigahertz max frequency and a six watt TDP or power draw from the whole machine itself. If this helped you out, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe. I'd love to see you back, but until next time, this is Carl from Techful Goodies. And I'm out.